and it's great to get away and rest for a while. And uh, that's kind of what we're looking at as we come, as we continue our study in the Big Ten in Exodus chapter 20. I hope as we've looked at the first three that you've uh, come away with some understanding about how those impact our lives and, and the difference they can make. And I want to apologize to those who aren't used to sitting in the front row. I, oh. You know, they came in and they said, you have to sit in the front row, and they all went, uh -huh. especially Ray. That, Ray wanted to blend in. Um, but anyway, the Big Ten, we've been talking about it for three weeks, uh, and uh, we had... Uh, we had the first one. I want to, we just kind of been reviewing them. So the first one is what? No other God. No other God. No other God. Second one. No graven image. No, do not worship or make any other God. Number three. Oh, come on. It was two Sundays ago. Do not misuse the name of God. Number four today is keep the Sabbath. remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. Five, don't kill. Honor your mother and father. Well, that could be part of it. Don't kill your mother and father. They can kill you. Number six, thou shalt not kill. No murder. Seven, no, 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 Eight. Do not steal. Nine. Do not lie. Number eight. Do not lie is number eight. Do not steal is number nine. Do not steal is number nine. Number ten. Do not want your other anybody else's stuff. That's my version of it. Those are the ten, and I hope, uh, by the sounds of it, I think we got a lot of work to do before we memorize all those. Uh, but I hope you see, we're not, uh, my goal in all this is to see those are not just Old Testament principles. They are principles that God has established for those who are looking for life, looking for uh, a difference in their home, a difference in their community, a difference in their nation. You could you almost imagine if, if our country and everybody in it started obeying those ten, what a difference our country would make. Somebody posted on Facebook the other day, the reason we have 17,000 pages of laws in our nation is because we can't obey ten. So I'm not sure we're being accomplishing anything by adding more laws. But today we're going to look at number four. And I want you, I want to encourage you, take your Bibles, if you will, and we're going to read it together. I want If you've got a Bible... We're just going to read it out loud together. Uh, it's the longest one, and I would say probably if uh, we were to uh, talk about the response and attitude of people toward it, it's probably one of the most contentious, uh, most one de most the one that's most debated. Let's pick up with verse eight. It says, "Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work." But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you, nor your son or daughter, nor your manservant or maidservant, nor your animals, nor the alien within your gates. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and is all, all that is in them. But he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. That's the longest commandment in all ten of them. And it's probably the most contentious. It's, it's a debate. There's a lot of people who say, we're New Testament people. The Sabbath doesn't apply to us anymore. And so they kind of ignore it. And there are others who say, you know, it's a great principle. Uh, the Old Testament observed it in, in the Jewish nation. They observed it from Friday, 6 p.m. to Saturday at 6 p.m. And it's a day of rest. But as men are often wont to do, they took that command and they had questions. What exactly constitutes work? And the Jews took that command and established 1,521 commands regarding the Sabbath. Now, that doesn't constitute a day of rest to me. If you're always trying to figure out, does this fit the 1,521? How do you remember 1,521 laws? I want to just share a few of them with you. Uh, that they said, the Jews said you could not walk over 3,000 feet from your home. Uh, 
you were not allowed to carry anything that weighed more than a dried fig. You couldn't carry a needle because you might t be tempted to sew something. Women were not to look in a mirror because they might pull a gray hair. You couldn't untie a knot, strike a hammer. You couldn't weave two threads together or write two letters of the alphabet. And since it was illegal to carry a burden, you couldn't pin a ribbon to your garment. But if it was sewn to the garment, it was part of the garment. And somebody on that said, it's a good thing they didn't have false teeth then. <laughs> and last one I want to share with you. Taking a bath was forbidden on the Sabbath because water might splash out on the floor and therefore clean the floor. So they took that and they made it, you know, Jesus said you've made it a burden for people. But, you know, that's just the Jews, right? We've never done anything like that. Yeah. We've never put rules on Sunday or, or tried to, to make, help people understand. We've never said, you know, you shouldn't watch TV on Sunday. You remember that? Uh, there are churches out there that said no, no TV on Sunday, no sports, uh, uh, no movies. You, really nothing fun. You know, you just, you just spend a day honoring God. And they wanted to define that. But I want us to understand that, that what we're talking about is not a bunch of rules, but a principle. It's not a bunch of rules. If you think about it, Jesus came and he said, I fulfilled the law. And in Colossians 2, Paul says, don't let anybody judge you when it comes to observing days, uh, full moon or new moon festivals and Sabbaths. He said, you know, Everything is holy to God. And in Romans 15, 14, he said, you know, don't look down on your brother because they honor one day above another. So obviously, the, the, those who get hung up on the day that we're talking about here are, have got the principle all wrong. This is a life principle that God has for us that, that he wants us to uh, observe. And, and if we put it into practice in our lives, it's going to be an amazing thing. I, I, and those, there's an outline in your bullet if you're taking notes. I'll give you the three R's. When it comes to this, the principle, and the principle we want to observe the Sabbath, the first one is remember, the second is rest, and the third one is reflect. I, I think those are three important principles. Let's start with the first one. Let's look, look back at it. It says, you, remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. The very first word that he gives us is remember. Anybody have trouble with their memory? <laughs> I, you know, we, I have a lot of trouble with my memory. You know, people have tried a lot of things to stir them. Anybody ever tie a string around their finger to help remember something? You know, I found out the only thing that helps me do is wonder why I have a string around my finger. Uh, Dolores writes everything down. She makes lists uh, of everything she wants to do and she keeps telling me, Don, if, if you'd make a list, it would help. But I forget to make the list. So, that, you know, we have a problem with memory, and God understood that. God understood that. You look at through the Old Testament. He delivered them from, from Egypt. You know what God understood about the Israelites? They were going to forget. And so he, said, he created the Passover. And the Passover for, was the purpose for remembering remembering what God did for you they came to the Jordan River and crossed and his instructions were I want each tribe to pick up a stone out of the river and I want you to build a, a pillar on the other side and every time you come by I want you to remember remember what I did here and we jump ahead to the New Testament Jesus meets with his disciples in the upper room and he takes the Passover and turns it around a little bit. And he takes bread and wine and he passes it around. And he said, this is my body and my blood. Each time you partake of this, what? Remember. Remember me. We have trouble remembering. And, and so the fifth to fifth fourth commandment starts out, remember the Sabbath day. And what I think he's telling us is don't let it become like every other day. Now, 
we talked about holy a lot. Holy is something that's set apart. It's not used for anything else. Uh, Dolores has some Christmas dishes that are up in the cupboard, and they come out one time a year. And uh, they come out at Christmas time, and then they go back, and we never see them again until next Christmas. So that Those dishes are holy in our house. Holy means just different and set apart. And, and God says, remember the Sabbath day. Out of the seven days, one day is to be set apart different than all the others. And he helps us remember that. Remember by keeping it holy. I, one thing I, I thought about, how do you do that? How do you remember that day? Well, I thought about somebody's garden spot. And, and around here, there's no trouble with deer getting into your garden, is there? Uh, you know, you plant a garden and people put six foot high fences around it to keep the deer out. You know, we put a stake around it. We put a fence around it and say, this is for that purpose. And I think a great policy for us is to look at our seven days during the week and one day to establish a fence around one that said this day is to be different. And I don't want you to get hung up on what day it is because in a, we no longer live in an agrarian society where people work the fields. We all have different work schedules, different times. But whatever that day is, God says, I want you to put a fence around it and establish it, remembering that, remember, I made it holy. And you need to keep it holy. So remember is the first one. The second one is rest. Go on and pick up, look at verse, uh, look at the next verse. It says, six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall do no, not do any work. How many are in favor of that? <laughs> Neither you nor your son or daughter. I don't think we'd have any trouble keeping them from working, would we? Neither son or daughter, nor your manservant or maidservant, that's your employees, nor your animals, nor the alien within your gates. So, second one is rest. But you notice God sets a, a pattern for our lives. He establishes a pattern. Work and rest. God intended all of us to be involved in some kind of productive labor. We see it in Genesis 2. God creates the garden. He puts man there, and it says in Genesis 2.18, God placed man in the garden to what? Work. Work the garden and take care of it. And we are all given the responsibility to work. He says work six days. Some of us don't even work five days anymore, but work is a part of a healthy life. Paul put it like this in 1 Thessalonians 3. He says, if a man does not work, he shall not eat. Now, I don't know about you, but that might be a good principle for us to use today in our society. I don't know. But work is an important part. Whether it's what we do for a living, whether it's what we do in volunteering, whether it's what we do in helping other people, we need to be involved in some kind of meaningful work. And one of the things that happens and I'm going to talk about more, but one of the things that happens is if we aren't involved in getting our minds and lives off of ourselves, we become self-centered. And folks, one of the things that happens when we get so self-centered is often we are prone to depression because we just focus on what's going on in our life and not reaching out, not seeing other things around us. So he says work. I had a guy in the... Uh, church he worked hard but every time you'd say you'd say work he'd go work <laughs> now, no, most of us would rather have a life of leisure and rest right no but there's a second part of that he says six days labor one day rest now out of those two working and rest which is the hardest part for you to do the rest rest. I, I, I believe that because we live in a society that's a, addicted to busyness. You know, we tend to value, place a value on ourselves depending on how busy we are. 
Next time you talk to someone, ask them how their day is. I bet you nine times out of ten you'll hear the word busy. How's your family? Oh, busy. It doesn't tell us anything about them except the fact that they are on the move constantly. It happens in all of our lives. Everything we do, we're busy, busy, busy. Even when we go on vacation, we're busy, 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 going, 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 and we come home exhausted, wanting another vacation to rest up from that. God says you need to rest. And how does he define that? Do no labor. Do no work of any kind. How many, this is a dangerous question, how long has it been since you took a day and did nothing? Well, you don't have to leave yet. <laughs> Anybody here took a, taken a day lately and done nothing? Well, well kids, yeah. That, somebody back there did. But that's hard to do, isn't it? Because we work all week and then we come home and what do we have to do? Catch up on everything we haven't done throughout the week. Resting is very hard. And if we don't rest, ceasing from labor, ceasing taking time to rest, there's some hazards to that, right? I read a story this week about a guy who went to a bowling alley in Beaverton and talked to the bowling alley only owner. And he found out that they have two sets of bowling pins. Every two weeks they switch the bowling pins because, he said, if you don't let the bowling pins rest, they will not bounce and fly because the wood gets fatigued. And if you give them two, two weeks rest, they come back and they bounce just as, as they did before. Somebody a long time ago told me, if you want your shoes to last longer, buy two pair and wear them every other day because with rest your shoes last longer and the insoles are able to recover and restore and provide care. Now if that's true for bowling pins and shoes, do you think it's valid for us? Do you think it's valid that we need time to, to refresh ourselves and remind ourselves? There are consequences to pay. I have a quote from a doctor that blew all over the floor. <laughs> Happened to me. It says, in the past few years, I've observed an epidemic of sorts. Patient after patient suffering from the same condition. The symptoms of this condition include fatigue, irritability, insomnia, anxiety, headaches, heartburn, bowel disturbances, back pain, and weight gain. There are no blood tests or x-rays for this condition, and it's easy to recognize the condition is excessive busyness. We kill ourselves by keeping moving and going, not only spiritually, emotionally, but also physically. God understood that. God didn't give us commands just because, oh, I, want, I want to ruin their lives and say, take a day off. We need rest. We need rest. We need to take a day off just to recoup. Now, another preacher said there's four kinds of rest we need. And these are important to write down, I think. Number one, you need social rest. That is time to build relationships, spending time with family and friends, just deepening your relationships and having fun together. The second kind is, uh, yeah, <laughs> mental rest. That is freeing your mind from anything that requires deep and heavy thought and concentration. Doing stuff with your mind that, ju you, that are just fun and just frees you from anything serious. The third one is physical rest. We need time off. We need time just to let our bodies relax and, and recover and refresh. And one and here I'm going to add my own little addition to this physical rest. Naps are legitimate. I want you to know that naps are legitimate because it gives your body that time to just recuperate and refresh. I, when's the last time you took a day and just found a place to take a nap? 
when's the last time you sat down and just did nothing but read a book or just do nothing? We need to rest. And, and one of the things that do no labor, it, it's a day when you need to just carve it out and say, this day is for me and I'm going to do nothing. No chores. Don't worry about catching up on all the things that have been left undone. Maybe even not even worry about fixing meals. Go out to dinner. Go out to lunch. Whatever. But just find a day that you don't have to worry about doing anything and just rest. Now, I don't know if you can do that or not. It takes discipline. It takes us staking it out and saying, okay, I have, I have two days off this week. Well, one day I'm going to... I'm going to use to catch up on the chores, but that one other day, I'm, it's going to be my Sabbath rest. It's going to be a time when I'm just going to relax and do nothing. Now, that would be revolutionary in our lives, wouldn't it? Because most of us can't take that day, or won't take that day off and just spend time. The fourth kind of rest we need is spiritual, and that is relaxing time just with God and me. That's where I believe Sunday services come in. It's a day to just come. And wasn't worship great today? To just come and, and, and be with God's people, to, to be loved on and cared for, to spend time letting God minister to us, and then also at spiritual rest in times, unrushed time in His Word, unrushed time in communication with Him, just to let him talk to us and us talk to him. Well, that, I can't think of anything better than a day like that. Some of us, some of you have worked long periods of time in a row. You remember how fatigued you get? Do you remember that time off afterwards and how you felt after the time off? You come back with more energy. You come back with renewed uh, vision and, and and power to do the work you have to do. But God says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Rest on the Sabbath day. And the third thing that I want us to, to look at is to reflect. Reflect is a great thing to do on, on a day like that. How many of you like mirrors? You know, when I was a kid, my mom would go shopping in pennies or all those, and she'd be trying clothes on. The thing that intrigued me as a kid were those mirrors. The three mirrors, I don't know if they still have those or not, but you'd stand in there and you could see all kinds, you could see yourself in all kinds of different directions and perspectives. You could see, you know, eventually you could see your back, you could see everything about you. It just showed you who you were. Mirrors are important to us. Uh, ladies, where would you be without a mirror in the morning? Well, I shouldn't say women because men are just as bad. Where would you be without a mirror in your life? You know, most of us wouldn't go to the house because we didn't know what we looked like. We didn't know if we were presentable or not. We didn't know if we were ready for the day. We use mirrors all the time to reflect, to show us who we are. How many of you walking down a street or in, go to a place that has a mirror? How many of you don't look? One hand. When we walk by a mirror, even if it's a sideways glance, we look. If we walk by a big window on the street, we look. We want to know what we look like, right? Reflection. We want to be presentable. We want to know everything's in the right place, in the right order, and just admire ourselves at times. I never do that. Do you think reflection's important in our spiritual life? I think there's three things we could reflect on as we think about the Sabbath. The first one... It says, let's go back to chapter 20 and look at the last part of it. He says, verse 11, For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, but he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. I think one of the things that God intended this day to be is a reflection on who he is. I am the creator. I am the all-powerful, almighty God. Take time. 
you know, today, just sitting out here and looking around the trees and, and looking at the sky and thinking about the, the clouds, and how can you not see God in this place? You look at creation and he's all around. How much time do we take just reflecting on it and thinking about who God is, his identity? But you're also reflecting on what he's done. If you go to Deuteronomy chapter 5, 15, uh, the second giving of the law, Moses adds something to that one. If you want to take time to turn over there. Chapter 5, verse 15 He's talking about the Sabbath, but he says, Remember that you were slaves in Egypt, and that the Lord your God brought you out of there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore the Lord your God has commanded you to observe the Sabbath day. What was Israel to reflect on? God's deliverance. What God had done for them. Take time. Think about what God has done for you. Think about all the miracles I performed, getting you out of out of Egypt. Think about the miracles in the wilderness. Think about the miracles crossing over, the battles I, I won for you. Think about that. Reflect on that. Of my love and my care and my grace towards you. It's not hard to carry that over to the New Testament, is it? Jesus did it. He said, reflect on my love for you. Reflect on the fact that I came and I died on a cross. I carried your sins and I was buried and I rose again think about the debt you owe to me think about all I've done for you what an amazing thing to focus on reflect on that how much time do we spend reflecting on it? Sabbath day provides a great opportunity for that and then the final one is to reflect on our future you know, Israel left Egypt. They were moving through the wilderness. They took time. Why did God call us up? Because he has a great future for us. I'm taking you to a land that I promised you. Reflecting on God's promises. Do we have a great future? You know, we think about this world and the troubles we have. This is not, this is not our home. This is not, we are just passing through and it takes, sometimes life gets us down. It would be beneficial to just take some time and reflect that life here is not the end of all. There is a promise. We are reflecting on a time in the future in a home in heaven where everything will be perfect, where we'll no longer have to work. And work will no longer be work. There will be no more pain, no more sorrow, no more death reflect on that. It gives you the energy and passion to move on through that difficult time. So you're remembering the Sabbath? How many of you have a Sabbath day you've set apart? You know, we need that. But to really know the rest that God has for us, there's two things we need to do. Number one, rest really isn't found unless you have a relationship with Jesus. Because in Matthew 11, 28, he said, Come to me, who, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. I will take that away from you. You see, in Jesus, we'll, you will never know real rest in your life until you find Jesus at the center of your heart and the center of your life. And then second of all, once we know Jesus, I would encourage you to look at your calendar and set a Sabbath. Set a day, whatever day it is, to just maybe start out with half a day. I, you know, but find a day when you're going to take time to, to just rest and do no labor, to get together with your family and friends and enjoy time, get together with God and enjoy relationship with Him, to get together and just, and just relax your mind and body. There's value, there's power in that. And today, as we have come as a church, and I use the church as a whole picture because we aren't just, well, mind the Christian church is not the church, it is part of the church. As we've come today, we have opportunity to reflect. 
This day is all about reflection. This morning is all about reflection. As we've sang the songs to remind us of what God's done for us. As we've heard his word and, and reflected our lives in that. But we also are reflecting on the fact that we're here because of one thing. And that is because Jesus came and died on a cross. And made us free. And gave us peace and rest. And so today we want to end this time together by giving you opportunity to to share in the Lord's Supper. We have it over here on the table. We'll just invite people to come up as they as they reflect on that and, and are ready for that. So just come up and, and help yourselves. I don't know if the worship team has a song we're going to sing during that time or not, but uh, let's just take some time to, to quietly uh, reflect on that and then when you're ready, make your way over to the table. Let me pray. Father God, thank you. Thank you for bringing us here today. Thank you for reminding us of our need. Uh, Father, we so often neglect our needs, and one of those needs is the need for rest. Lord, I just ask that you would help us to remind ourselves of that rest today we have in Jesus. Thank you for these emblems. Uh, Lord, let us find a new peace in our lives as we reflect on you. In Jesus' name, amen. In the morning.